As far as I'm concerned, her breast implants are there, so she is there, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Oops, sorry, spoiler. Oh, mercy. Why haven't you been on Twitter? Mm-hmm. Because that would involve you helping, John. That is the here. ugliest dog I've ever seen. <gasps> oh my <laughs> god, I'm done with the show. <laughs> and welcome to our week two Opposite Worlds recap show. We're going to fill you guys in on everything that you missed from this past week and have our interview with Wyatt. And some of your questions you've made the interview, you can jump to that right over here. But why would you not want to watch our recap and filling you in first? You guys love us, which is why you're also going to thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. It really helps support the show, as does doing any of your online shopping with our Amazon link over on the homepage of yourrealityrecaps.com. And hey, this is the edited version of this show, but while you guys are over on the website, you should also check out yourrealityrecaps.com slash worlds. There we chat live with you during the show. We have all of our Opposite Worlds blogs and information and these edited, you know, versions of the show. Now I say edited because if you want to watch the live version, head over to yourrealityrecaps.com slash live show for all of our live show schedules. Watch us do them live and interact with us during them. So much stuff we have for you guys. Now, one more little note. Tomorrow night, we are doing our reality check show, which is all about us and you guys. You guys pretty much control the show. We talk about what you want. We interact with you live in the chat and in the comments section for the whole show. And we're always joined by reality stars. And this Saturday, it's going to be James Wallington and his sister from the CW Capture. So such a good show for you today. Such a good show for you tomorrow. But we need to talk what you guys really care about. And that's Opposite World. World's week two. So you know the deal. Find out all this information and more by following me over at Twitter. I'm at Reality Recaps. Who's here with me? Hey everyone, it's John Richardson. Excited to talk about Opposite Worlds this week. You can follow me at Comedy Jonah. John, just one thing that we have to tell people. Well, I do. It really wasn't you. They're all going to throw knives at me. Remember that super amazing announcement I said that we were going to have for you guys on Friday? Well, as it turns out, it's going to be Monday. So if you guys look waiting around, it might be Saturday. It might be on Saturday's reality check show. I promise it will be by Tuesday. <laughs> We're shooting for Monday. It might be Saturday. <laughs> we promise you on Tuesday. It will all make sense by then. That is the last day. Because I'll just tell you all by Tuesday. I feel horrible that the date keeps changing. It's not our fault. But don't worry. It's John's fault. Um, We will fill you guys all in. So now... <laughs> so now let us talk. Well, well let's let's worlds. talk about your other announcement. That were, were we supposed to be talking to Rachel? Um, no, nobody knew that. That was called a private conversation. <laughs> 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 but well, well, here <laughs> the thing is, remember how John was sick? Everybody when he when we he got home from New York. Well, now I am sick. And I have just, I felt like if we can just do the live recap today, I can rest tomorrow and just do the interview and have like a restful day. So I kind of like, I switched the times around for the show. So yes, Rachel was going to sit in on this show, but now she's not. It's my fault. Blame influenza. However, I will tell everybody this. Rachel will be sitting in the following week. McRae of McRae and Amanda will be sitting. Oh, yeah. McCrace's. This is news to me. Mm-hmm. Well, welcome to the party. Welcome <laughs> to the party. So it will be John and I and a guest every week from now on. And keep in mind, that is aside from the interview that we're doing with the Eliminated House guest on our recaps as well. So this is your last time you're getting just John and I recapping <laughs> Opposite Worlds for you. My head's going to explode. It's just McRae, John. It's not like we're talking the <laughs> Dalai. <laughs> can we just can we just number one talk about 
how I don't ever like seeing or hearing people discuss number two, okay, on TV. I don't like vomiting on TV, and I sure as shit don't like shit talk and people talking about how they're clogging up a toilet with shit. Doesn't need to be on TV. Doesn't doesn't nope. interest interest you at all? No, nope. it's not because I'm pretty sure they didn't have the toilet paper on the spool either. Okay, <laughs> people. Okay, <laughs> to the so. leaves. To the leaves. So let's talk about like the reward and punishment, right? That's how we kind of led up on Tuesday with that, with the right. the least favorite and the favorite player. And of course, we know Jr. got favorite. And yes, and our little Jeff Rye got the worst. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Did you say something? Did you want to say something? I was going to say, oh yes, <laughs> we um we packing up some phlegm. Yes, we <laughs> we did know that. We already know that they won. And um, do you want to talk about what the what the what happened first? The massive yeah. major yeah. breaking news. Um, yeah. Our team wins. Steve was voted in. Steve and Mercy. Steve, I love you. The one that got his eye wrecked? Yeah. Quitted. The nerdy guy? Dorky. Dorky, nerdy, lives in New York. Yeah. But no, you don't like him? No. What about Mercy? And I fear to do this, but we do comedic, and we would say it about anybody. So here's my problem with Mercy. Uh, her eyes are too big. Like, when she talks, she's like, oh, mercy. Like, her <laughs> eyes are, like, ginormous. And I love her. Because You're I'm gonna racist. Go, uh, no. I love me some mercy because she gets that she's playing America. And she has a mission and a goal. And mercy is to the top of my list for a good player in this game. But I was so thrilled that Steven made it into this game. I love him. We will talk more about him getting in. But then, go ahead, John. Reward and punishment. Would you like to tell what else we accomplished this week? We also accomplished little Jeff Rye, who is of our tribe but driving us a little crazy. But he's playing the game. Um, got him to not eat for 24 hours, right? Oh, we starved the Jeff Rye. Mission accomplished, people. <laughs> Internet high five. We did it. We told you to starve them, and we starved them. <laughs> I was so happy about that. I was so happy. Unfortunately, I found out voting closes on Thursdays at noon, and we don't do this show until Thursday night or Friday afternoon, so there's really no way we can influence the voting anymore unless you guys are chatting with us when we watch the show live or on Twitter when we watch the show live. So we will give you your orders next week, minions. Absolutely. So you're not liking Steve, but how do you feel about Mercy? I don't think any either way, really. Really? I, I really wanted to go into... Frank's grooming. Because you're aware that he likes to tell us all how he shaves his whole entire body. He does. He's hairless, yes. I don't know. I like Frank. I mean, I tried to piss you all off while we were all watching the show <laughs> and telling you that we were officially endorsing Frank because I knew you all didn't like him. But um, I don't I don't mind him. And I think I'm gonna shock everybody this week, but I'm gonna I'm gonna save it. Cause let's talk about the worldly challenge where Mercy and Steve <laughs> kind of get introduced to everybody and uh, talk about Easter came early with Steve tied up to that pole. I was like, <laughs> how are you doing, Steve? I'll be your Hermione. I'll be your whatever you want, Steve, tied to that pole. Well, that mm -hmm. was a small basket. It would have never been found in the patch. So, the newbies are the ones that are tied up Right? Mm hmm. And what's with these challenges? They're insane. They're dangerous. Yeah. These challenges. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think I tweeted out like, I hope everyone on Opposite Worlds has signed up for Obamacare at least because uh -huh. this shit's really crazy. Well, not to jump around too much, but I loved tonight when Luke was talking to Lauren, and he was like, how is your finger doing from that uh, injury the first week? And Lauren's like, it's doing great. And he's like, so you think you'll be able to use it again in the future, right? Like, you shouldn't have any problems with it? And in I was the just... Future. I was just dying. No, I was dying laughing. It was as if, like, 
legal is telling us that you are sending it on live TV. We are not responsible for those. Your finger injury. I just loved it. I thought it was very funny. Hitting the shield so hard that it was denting JR's shield. Oh my Good. gosh. Those, those would hurt hitting you. Hurt. Yeah. My poor little Steven, which now, Frank, I don't like you. My poor little Steven with his glasses on, he had hit so hard. It, like, cut open his whole... Uh, that was horrible for a poor little Steven, little Quidditch boy. I didn't like uh, it. That's going to scar, too. I mean, hit me wherever you want, just not the face, okay? Like, if you're mm. going to hit me somewhere, even in the crotch region, just don't, not the face, not the face. Yeah, I thought the challenge was weird. We were all, m me, you, Dana, who also talks with us in the chats during um, Opposite Worlds, we were all saying, like, this challenge is a little bit difficult to follow. Like, we didn't really get it. But then we figured it out. You tie them up, and then the opposite teams have to untie them. And once again, Kronos wins. And I think Kronos is just going to keep on winning. I do too. But you know, getting it back to the challenges a little bit, because I think these challenges are so crazy hard and dangerous. Like, I was trying to imagine myself seeing this on Big Brother. You know, I mean, look at poor Gina Marie. Hurt her ankle, hurt this, had stitches. What if she was in this challenge? What would happen to her, okay? Or even on Survivor, how they... <coughs> get injured with those challenges. This, these challenges on Opposite Worlds are crazy, but Kronos does win with mm -hmm. their crazy leotard white outfits, and um, yeah. I don't think it was as painful as they made it seem, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Somebody throw tomatoes at me next time you see me, and I'll let you know. I'll do it. John is I'll volunteering. Do it. Or I'll do it. Comment below and let us know if you've ever been hit with tomatoes. <laughs> now, here's my favorite. Well, oh, you have? Mm -hmm. <laughs> my favorite part was when they were walking to the challenge and they kind of saw that Steve and Mercy were standing there and clearly they were dressed in the outfit so you knew they were joining the two teams. And it cuts to Jeff Fry in his confessional and he's like, I did not work <sighs> this hard to make it to the final ten to have a two more... And I'm just like, girl, it's been two days, one elimination... Calm down, Jeff Fry. Calm Pump down. the brakes, Jeff Fry. Pump the brakes. I loved that the two newbies had their backs to the teams as they were walking up, like, ta da, like almost being presented, right? Well, I. The future's winning and they're staying in the future. And I think that's just going to keep on happening. I want them to I, switch. I would say this would be the week a switch would happen. I think there are things that. Um, can influence the game. We always know there are outside forces which can always play a part when things get you uh, familiar. Right. But here's what's really bothering me. Um, or here, I should say this. No, John, the correct answer... Rewind. The correct answer is, no, John, thanks to the popularity index, we control the game. So if we really want the sides to switch, we should be awarding and punishing people on uh, Twitter with the hashtag Opposite Worlds, is what I meant to say, because we technically all control this game. Um, now, speaking of the game... Here's my one little point, and I want people to comment below, and I want to know what you think, John. It is killing me that Jeff Fry is the most strategic player in this game right now. Because we see that um, he's told he's the most hated player, and he's there with the... Uh, uh, but then the next scene is him being smart enough to realize, I need to play the other side of the house. So he's yeah. giving giving food what to do you, the other What side. do you think of him choosing... J JR as his ally and, and throwing food over and all of that stuff. I mean, is he making a good choice there, do you think, with JR? Yeah, that's my point. He is the most strategic player in this house. I know, but JR's not the only one on the opposite team. Out of everyone, well, not Wyatt anymore. Oops, sorry, spoiler. Out of everyone else, <laughs> Laura and everyone else, JR is the one he picked to be have an alliance with. Do you think that was a good pick? Yes, because I think uh, that Jeff Fry is a scholar like we are of reality TV. And we saw him start to make that bond with JR last week. Now, 
Could he have went somewhere else? Sure. But the whole throwing the food over the wall and really solidifying it did not happen until after he found out that, once again, JR was the favorite, but now he is the most hated. So I think as a smart strategic player in this game, he knew, I need to go pair up with the most liked player. Not only pair up... America is watching them starve, and even I feel so bad for you, he says to her. <laughs> oh, so his wheels are spinning. I know. I'm going to get food to him and food to that side. However, here's my question. Brilliant move. Jay, um, Jeff Rye is playing this game the best, but do you feel that was cheating, John? And you guys, comment below and let us know. Do you feel it was cheating throwing the food over the wall? I don't. I absolutely agree with you. You took the words right out of my mouth. I think picking JR was the smartest because he is America's favorite right now. And we were all voting for him too. I don't you know what? If 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 the you know, if the producers or whatever or the, the voice of the the opposite world's house, the Surrey, it's right here. I don't know. I think she's just Athena. Athena. Ath Athena's not in the caveman world. Jeff Rye, you can't throw food over the glass wall. Um, she would have said something, so I don't think it's cheating, and I think any advantage you can get, you should take it, absolutely. <laughs> Here is a great question from YouTube. Bunny Lebowski 2007 says, What did we think about how long Jeffrey took to talk with JR at that wall? He could have been caught easily by the others, and he got lucky. Well, I do. I mean, he, it, it did seem like a, a long time, but also, too, you know, it's edited. So this just could be how the show was edited. It seemed like a lot longer. You know, we don't even know that could have been two conversations that kind of were edited maybe into one. But, yeah, I totally agree. As far as what we saw, I thought it was long, too. And if it was, and I'm wrong with editing, absolutely right. I think you're right. It could definitely be editing. Another <laughs> oh, thing, girl, a, another thing which we her. know from reality TV and the you know production end, and I'm not saying this is what happened. We just know that um, let's say sometimes people would want that conversation to happen. Well, they might say, "Hey, Jeff Rye, we have to film something with you in the backyard," because he was in the backyard. You go in the backyard. Everyone else, I need you all to stay on this side of the house. We have to shoot some stuff of Jeff Rye, thus allowing him to do that. Because maybe the backyard is where they have uh, their little confessionals, and they have to do them alone. So there could be opportunities where he would be in yeah. a position where he was alone for a good length of time. And production on any show yeah. helps facilitate those along sometimes. Absolutely. And I think, too, another kind of good point that was brought up during our tweeting with our, our viewers and fans, and we're fans of them, I think we lost Amanda Zuckerman from Big Brother 15 because I don't think, she, what did she say? She said there wasn't enough strict kind of strategic talk, so she kind of was losing interest a little bit. I don't know. I wasn't there. I secret everyone. I did. I wasn't able to watch last night. I was very ill. I was just curious because I know Big Brother fans are watching this show, even some Survivor. What do you guys think? Do you think? I mean, we see a lot with Big Brother. We see a lot with the live feeds. We see all the strategic talk and all the trash talk, but we're not seeing it really with Opposite Worlds. Is Amanda right? Is there just not enough strategic talk? I don't know. I'm I'm flip flopping a little bit. I mean, I'm glad we're seeing Jeff Wright doing it with Jr., but no one else really is. I think it's because we don't have a live feed. We don't have them 24 seven, and I think it's yeah. you know, it's a new show for sci-fi. I think they're learning. So I think um, in time, they they basically have what 12 storylines that they got to take a little piece from each. Week. I think it's really hard. Even in Big Brother, we don't really learn a lot about anybody in the first two or three weeks, really. And that's basically almost as long as this show is, so I could see how it would be hard. However, John, we can ask Amanda, because um, I'm sure she'll be around when we have McRae on um, in two weeks to discuss Opposite Worlds with us. So we will get the answer to your question, awesome. what reality people are thinking. Um, Epoch voted Lauren as a protected, and Kronos voted uh, Frank, Frank to be the protected. 
and then they all switch sides and talk or whatever. Nothing really exciting happened in all Well, that. but before we go, before we get there, because now we're getting into last, um, or we're getting into, yeah, we're starting to get into last of the episode. So, you know, part of our recap, too, you know, because normally, you know, we do it on, we're going to do it on Fridays. We're a day early. But we're also going to talk about stuff on the website, right? So mm -hmm. I saw a lot of tweets, a lot of social media around, you know, nobody was that crazy about Frank, but they saw his video, his kind of his plea to why we should pick him as the decider, and people were saying it was really good, and I'm curious what else, who else thinks it was pretty good? I thought the, the votes were going to shift a little bit into Frank's favor. America, please pick me as a decider because I'm a good guy. I'm a family guy. I have a beautiful wife at home and two beautiful children. I'm a New York City firefighter for 11 years and a former New York City police officer. I'm a competitive guy, as you've seen in the two worldly challenges. I love to compete. I'm here to win for my team and win for myself. If you want to see a great duel of destiny, you would pick me because I'm thinking about picking Jesse and Wyatt. Please vote for me. Thank you. I think, I don't know, I think too many people don't like Frank for some reason. And, and, and I don't know why. I don't know why. But, okay, let's go here now then. Okay. Here's what I think might be a little shocking for you. I'm Team Jesse. I like Jesse. I think Jesse's playing a great game. I think he took the starving challenge. He volunteered himself to do that with Jeff Rye when they already didn't like each other. He didn't say he was doing it to attack him or to make his life harder. He said, I think I'll be the best one to support him through this. It's not going to be that hard for me. When when Jeff Rye is arguing with him at the table about who are we going to protect and who are we going to vote for and all that, he was like, no, that's not what I'm going to say. I think I should go up. I have the best chance and we even saw it kind of in the end but we won't really get to the outcome but we saw he was very humble he with Wyatt he is saying no hard feelings you know I think well Jeff god he won I mean I would say the same thing okay everyone send your hate tweets to at reality recaps um for liking Jesse um you can all team Laura, Lauren can send them to me at comedy Jonah because I disagree with Eric Oh. And I don't care for Jesse, and I just, he's, you know, James kind of warned us that he had this cockiness. You know, I just, ever since he came out of the gate so fast and injured, and I'm so bad with names, injured the first player. Charles. Charles. Um, I just have, and then his mouth, I just have not cared for him at all. And, you know, poor little Jeff Rye knows he's on the chopping block, so that's the reason why he's doing all that with, with Jesse. So I think it was kind of smart. I think there is no reason for America to hate Jesse. I think he is playing a straightforward game. He is honest. He is not mean. He is not a bad person. He's I don't mean. think. I don't think he intended to break Charles' leg at all. Oh, I don't think so either. So then you don't have but a... That's why everybody's mad at him, because they thought his apology was insincere. And I just think he's well, a straight... He's a straightforward person. And don't get me wrong, I'm a sensitive person. I don't necessarily like straightforward people, but I think in a reality TV show, that is a good quality to So have. you're a straightforward person who doesn't like straightforward people. Is that what you're saying, oxymoron? No, I'm saying I'm sensitive. I don't like when people are necessarily so direct with me. And then I'm thinking of like being in a reality TV show. Like Jesse would say to you, John, I don't like you. You're wrong. I don't like you. Now, most people would not play a reality TV competition that way. They'd be like, oh, John, we're going to work it out. We, we made it over that hump. And then they would go behind your back and be like, I hate John. We need to get him out of this house. Exactly <laughs> what Jeff Fry is doing. But Jesse will tell it to you to your face. And he's a competitor. He is not afraid to go in. He's not afraid to fight. He helps his team. I don't know why everybody hates him. I also don't know why I'm defending him so hardly. But I just liked him. Someone's this got another boy crush. No, I do not have a boy crush on Jesse. But you guys, comment below. Are you agreeing with me? Do you feel like everyone's being too hard on Jesse? Or are you wrong like John and think that, <laughs> no, there is... Team Lauren's never wrong. I'm not saying I'm anti-Lauren. I'm just saying... I didn't just... say you were. I didn't oh, then what say. Did... Then what did oh, I say? don't want to be too direct with you. Uh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. 
but <laughs> I'll talk in a softer voice for you. Is that okay? I don't, need you to talk a, I don't need you to talk in a softer voice. I can just meet you. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Would you like to talk in a softer voice? Because I control that on my end. <laughs> so really, that's all that matters. <laughs> Um, so, uh, but this is a good point. We should continue arguing because this is a great segue <laughs> for the argument of Cry Baby Wyatt, who I don't know how I'm going to interview tomorrow because oh, the whole team is, is not sticking to their word. They want to throw me in and boo hoo. And you guys, are... what a freaking cry baby this Wyatt is. And I'm not even talking about the end. Let's hold that was... I'm Talking right. To That's you're not even talking about the end. This was the beginning yeah. of the next episode. Yeah, uh, right. last night's episode. And they were all sitting around. And, you know, Wyatt, he's like 48 years old. He's a really good looking man. I mean, that's the first thing I saw in the beginning when they were all just half naked, right? In the very first episode, I was like, oh, how you doing? How you doing, Wyatt? But to see the way he was acting, and it's just like, you know, Obviously, they kind of knew they were going to put Jesse in. He was the best possible match for him. Yet he, I don't know what he didn't feel up to it or what he didn't get a good night's sleep in the the cave world. You know, I just I I was really like, yeah, I was really getting disappointed with him. And then it just it just kept going. See, I feel like America wanted Jesse versus Wyatt last week. That is what we all wanted. We were all shocked. It. We were all shocked when it was Rachel versus Angela. Mm -hmm. And then I almost feel like karma and the... Oh, I'm so used to saying and the big brother gods. Karma and the opposite world gods kind of came through and made it all happen. And, and it's like, ooh, the foreshadowing of we're going to get to see a Jesse versus Wyatt. But... Once again, this shows, thank God for Steve, we now have another strategic player in this game. And Steve is smart enough to know, I am just going to sit here and I'm going to let Wyatt sink his own ship. I'm just going to look like the little innocent, oh, he's ganging up on me, he's so mean. And, you know, it, it worked for him. It Listen, worked. Just, just wrap it up like a burrito, okay? Oh, she's going <laughs> to wrap it up like a burrito. Just right, wrap right, this right. up like a burrito. Just wrap it up like a burrito. Yeah, wrap it up. I've been saying it all week, Lauren, just so you know. Do you, now, let me ask People you this. at work are asking me stuff. I'm like, just wrap it up like a burrito. Well, let me ask you this, because this is kind of a funny conversation, like little side <laughs> note. I actually have two side notes. We'll make this the side <laughs> note section. Okay. Number one, like I'm watching the show, and I forget that we interview these people. So like I'm watching it, and like I'm like my partner's there, and I'm like, oh my god, I would give anything to get to talk to Steve. And then I'm like, oh wait, I do get to talk to Steve. And I'm like, da -da -da. and then I'm like, oh my god, Sam, oh, I wish I could ask her right now. And then I'm like, oh, I actually get to ask her. I forget. <laughs> do you forget? <laughs> when you're watching, like, oh, we interview these people each week. And we I always them. do. I always yeah. do. Yeah. Always do. Yeah. So do I. I love it. So I love so you, Sci-Fi And I then my it. other my, my other side note, because it's not really relevant to this week, other than it was mentioned once or twice, I don't like these people saying that Rachel was the weak link on Kronos. Because as we know from the interview that we did with Rachel last week, she was amazing, and she would have been amazing in this game. It kills me that it she's kills. not there. Kills it me. kills me, and you know what? It killed them, too. I mean, if you hear the way they were talking at the beginning of, you know, the, as we're jumping around, the time before, they really liked Rachel, and she was a really good competitor. So, yeah, I would have liked to see her go a lot farther, too. Absolutely. They all just but, have... But she's going a lot farther with us. Your, your reality recaps. Yay! True. She'll be on discussing Yay. all things sci-fi, um, opposite worlds next Friday with us. I'm super excited, but she is good. Like, seriously, people, you don't even have to watch our whole recap. Just go back and listen to her interview. She gives tons of behind-the-scene info, tons of detail on players, and a lot of stuff we didn't even realize. Which, kind of to that point, we were also right, John, they are all now aware that America's watching and they're playing to us now. Like, 
We were right. Yeah. We said as soon as they found out that they were mm-hmm. playing to America, stuff was going to change, and it kind of has, kind of has. It kind of does. So now we got the votes back, and we find out JR last week had 90% favorites. Then the like votes is come like back. a box yeah. of voting. <laughs> All I'm saying well, is listen still, to them. You're, just, you're still trying to do that, huh? You're still trying to make that work? People, comment below. <laughs> Next time JR is on the screen, close your eyes and you think far as God. You did it on Twitter. Now you've done it, you've done it here. like this, too. Like, life <laughs> is like the voting. Life is like the voting. Okay, guys. Still it. trying to make that stick, huh? It's going to stick. Um, See, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So Lauren gets 93%. Mm-hmm. 93% of the votes. Team Lauren. And I have to say, I think it has a lot to do with all of the content that is on the Opposite Worlds website because Lauren didn't really get a lot of airtime last week at all. So mm-hmm. is it that, like, we didn't really get to know her very well is my point. So I think, I don't think people hate Frank that much. I think people are loving all the extra content about Lauren, like the pictures, the photos, what she's saying on the Opposite Worlds website that are making people love her. And I think she's amazing. I definitely like me some Lauren, but I kind of also like Frank better too. And I'm not just saying it to disagree with you. <laughs> well, I like Frank. I love that he is a, a, a new a firefighter in New York, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love all of that about him. That excessive grooming just really just drives me insane. And then he was what almost like pretty much almost beating his chest, saying beast mode, beast. You know, and I hear that beast mode all the time because I live in Seattle and the Seahawks are in the Super Bowl. So even my partner's running around beast mode style. So you know what I did? What you wanna? You know what I did? I was, of course, I was getting my drink on right because I'm comedy Jonah, and. I tweeted out, it's hard to take Frank seriously with those eyebrows as he's as he's shouting out, and I put breast mode. Breast mode. Now, did you tweet it out that way? Or I did. Theory auto It's hard to take. You? It's, I, I, you know, who knows? I was drinking. Uh, it's hard to take breast mode seriously with those <laughs> eyebrows. Can you? <laughs> Dana is the one that caught me on that one. I was dying, and then I corrected it out, and then everyone gave me shit for correcting it. But I didn't delete my old one either, so I don't know. It just tickled me. So it was very funny. So um, since I'm in New York, um, dear NYPD and I, former NYPD and current. Uh, and why FD officers, you can send your hate tweets to at Comedy Jonah. Listen, I just said I I love it. I love New York. I am so excited with all the, the great stuff we have coming up this year that I'm in New York more often than I normally am. So I'm excited about that because I love me some New York. But and, I love that the, and I love that the Empire State Building has Seahawks colors. Back to the show. It wasn't Seahawks colors. It was lavender gay colors. Don't don't make it all about your Seahawks. Um, it was. And I was going to say, z- 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 we are not allowed to tell anybody about any more of that until Monday. Um, you'll have to tune in or choose at the latest for what we're talking about. Uh, so, yeah, I, again... Wyatt also, with him going on on about the team and the team has to stick together. We've been doing this for day one. Again, it's been like five days. We know that Steve and Mercy both came in on day five. You don't have longevity in this game, Wyatt. That's a horrible, stupid defense to make. And I'm so glad that um, Lauren, like John said, wins with 83% of the vote and decides she is putting up Jesse versus Wyatt. Because good Wyatt, I'm sick of your whining and your crying. But it doesn't even stop there. Once he finds out he's nominated, he just keeps going. Well, now I'm doing this myself. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna win for myself. I'm gonna die. And it's... Uh, shut up! And then do us all a favor, because you're all like, I'm military, and I'm a police officer. Then how about you act with class and honor, and not like a crybaby? Because all you're doing, you're like throwing a temper tantrum on live TV, Wyatt. 
Well, the thing that was driving me nuts, too, was he was throwing a a tipper tantrum. And the thing that was hilarious, he's like, now I have to do this game for me. Uh, Isn't that why you're there? Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. Is it me? Is it me? Yeah, they're all doing it for them, but it's just... Right there, if I was on his team, and this is why I won't do a reality show, I would have turned around and been like, okay, so you're not all part of the team, so bye, you're in. Like, clearly it didn't mean anything to you at all. Like, if you can yeah. walk away from it that easily, it didn't mean anything. After Big Brother 15, I won't do reality TV anymore. Yeah, I mean, and I also liked that moment where, you know, I feel like Luke was almost trying to stir the shit up a little bit when he's like, so, Jesse, you're finally going against Wyatt now. Now that Wyatt knows you have anything you want to say. And once again, I love Jesse. I apologize. I don't think my apology came off correctly, but good luck to you, Wyatt. Uh, Respect. I love Mm -hmm. me some Jesse. But there's Wyatt crying in a corner. Can't wait to talk to you in a few minutes. <laughs> Wonder how this is going to go. Going to need some questions, John. <laughs> um, and viewers. Um, yeah, so the duel of destiny, right? Mm-hmm. Another crazy thing with swords and having to find them. They had to break through the wall, go through the tar pit, <laughs> Find a sword, run back, stick the sword in the stone. It was a medieval challenge. P.S. Next week, future right. world challenge with robots. Um, uh, I don't know why none of them did the strategy that I would have done. I would have looked for all the swords first and pulled them all to one spot and then just ran back and forth sticking the sword. They didn't say you yeah. could do that. Yeah. And, I mean, I the person, I was watching it with my partner, and he pretty much said, and I agree, I saw Wyatt was holding on to that fourth sword for a long time. He had it for a good 20 seconds in his hand before he got out to put it in. So I think that's what he was doing. He was looking for the last sword so he would be ready to go. But I've heard other people say, I don't think he wanted to go back to that team. So, yeah. I don't know. But at the end of the day, Jesse won. Jesse won. I am so thrilled Jesse won. And that is when Wyatt has his big girl meltdown. What would you think of that? Well, Jesse won by the hair of Frank's chinny chin. Oh, wait. Frank doesn't have any hair. Right. You had 50-50 chance. And now I went home. I'm not talking to you. It's 50-50 chance. And I went home. <laughs> you bet on 50-50. And I lost the 50. So 50-50, I'm staying over here. And I'm going to go into my hot tent. I'm going to my hot tent <laughs> with my 50-50. And I'm leaving you all over there. Because you all gambled on my life and 50 you. Shut up. No, I was really disappointed. Well, the, first of all, the challenge was so close that I was just crazy flipping out. I'm like, Screaming, I need a Xanax. Somebody throw me a Xanax. Okay? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, when Jesse won, and you know, Jesse didn't even rub it in his face either. So I gotta give him props for that, right? Jesse has been nothing but respectable. Let's ask Charles that. <laughs> okay. We'll ask Charles that. It's not his fault. I don't. I, Are um... we gonna interview Charles or not? We're gonna even get him? Let me ask you this question. If you had a chance at $100,000, okay, and then somebody knocked you off a platform and broke your leg in two places, which will affect you for the rest of your life, you have to have three surgeries, you're probably in the hospital, is your thought, oh, shit, I can't wait to talk to reality recaps today? No. I I don't think it is. I would have sawed my leg off and continued playing. I would have hopped to the Duel of Destiny. Well, clearly, sci-fi... Um, John will be on next week. <laughs> so, there you go. No, we could have him. I honestly... Not I felt... those white outfits. Did you see the white, the off-white and white? What's going on with the costumes? I don't know, but all the more reason... As a gay, see... is... As a gay, is it, doesn't that drive you nuts? Or is it just I, me? Nuts. I hear you with nuts. And let's get Steve into the white outfits, is what I'm... I agree. <laughs> yes. What? 
Why the F what? Thanks for tuning in to our Opposite Worlds recap. Stay tuned for Wyatt's interview next. <laughs> yeah, John, okay, relax. I'm the one who throws it to Wyatt, not you, buddy. So let me do that. Without further ado, everybody, here's Wyatt, and then we will be back to wrap it all up. Roll it. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Wyatt, go to the beach. Hey, Wyatt, how are you doing? I'm full of joy. Things are good. Good. Well, you know what? Let's get right into it because I have so many questions for you. We have so many fan questions for you. But right off the bat, um, clearly losing the Duel of Destiny challenge, we saw how uh, upset you were. And one of uh, your fans on Twitter, LK Armstrong, wants to know, do you regret the way that you exited the game and have you apologized to the team? Um, uh, No, not at all. And I think that what a lot of the fans didn't get to see, which led that to what it became, was um, everything that I had done for the team and a pact that was set early on, which was not fair. And that was if someone was to come into the team, um, we would eliminate them because, or not eliminate them, I should say, but we would put them up for the next duel because we were so tight in integrity and unity and suffered through so much and the new person would just be dropping in and that was the plan. Um, I was much like, the father of the clan, where I built the fire, I built swings, I actually built a bathroom for the ladies, and I did so much. So you get a new guy that comes in, his merit, which I did discuss on one of the footage that they showed, was not to match mine. So the obvious choice was to put the new blood into a situation where a 50-50 chance he may go home or he may win and benefit the team. Otherwise, you 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 lose a very important person within that team is how I had viewed it and we had agreed on it. Well, somewhere down the line, they had turned on me and it was unannounced. It, it just, they kind of hit me over the head with it. And it was, um, for me, a man of integrity, military kind of background, you look after each other. You have my six, I have your six. And for them to expose their um, lack of integrity to me and losing trust was very frustrating. I did not get upset because I lost. I actually feel, you know, I was winning that event, but I was in a bad place because had I won that event, I would have gone back to a, a, a bad part of the game for me. I was not happy with my team any longer. Um, it was kind of like a bad argument where, you know, their, their sense of argument was I was the best person to go up against Jesse. And, yes, they were right, but my advice was, Based on the integrity, based on the strategics and the tactics, it was not my time to take on Jesse. We had a choice to put new blood in, and the new blood was to maybe win or maybe not 50-50 because that's what the game was. And they would have been a loss if they they left, but not a big a loss as me being gone, which I contributed far more than Steve did or Steve brought to the table. So I was upset with the stab in the back, not the loss. In fact, I believe um, after talking to my family and everything, I am needed back home right now with uh, financially and, and morally and everything, or the support that my wife needs. I think there may have been, quite honestly, some type of a divine intervention because I was leading. And if you notice, there was a pause and, and something happened where something told me to stick, call a little bit or something. And a lot of people say I threw the race or the game, um, something happened, and, and I was winning. I would have won, and I'm very confident in that, so I have nothing to prove. However, again, I, 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 I was in a bad place. I wish that I, I could have won the event, walked up to the front, and said, keep Jesse, I need to go home. But um, powers beyond my control assisted me in losing, I guess, and I'm going home, and I'm very happy. It's a good time for me to get out. Had I gone back into the cave with the clan that was no longer a clan or of integrity or the wolf pack, in my eyes, would have been a bad place to be. So I'm actually happy. Right. So I'm I'm kind of glad you brought that up because that's something that I definitely noticed as well. It almost seemed like when you were when you, you had your fourth sword for a while and you weren't you know getting out to go place it in. I kind of felt like 
you were looking for your last sword so you could kind of have it ready so you know where it is when you go back in. But you're saying no, you were purposely hesitating at that point? No, 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 um, not exactly. I said that there must have been some type of a divine intervention that stalled me. For whatever reason, I can't explain right. what was going on in my head. I mean, I had the sword, right. and I kept looking to see where he was at. And, you know, um, I'll leave it at that. I guess it's kind of up for some interpretation. I can't really, you know, explain it. I don't, um, right. you know, I don't actually have the exact way to say, hey, yeah, you know, I, I threw it. I wouldn't say that, but something... Put me well, in that position where I'm going home and I'm needed, I found out. And uh, the only other thing that I wish that could have happened, like I said, is if I had won, I didn't want to give that victory to that, that wolf pack that no longer existed. And I would have liked to have been able to say, keep Jesse, I need to go home. But right. they may not have let me have that option. So therefore, for whatever purpose, right. you know, the loss was beneficial to me. Okay, so um, then to go back a little bit to what you said earlier about how you almost felt blindsided, it definitely came across that way. Um, at the Duel of Destiny, it kind of seemed like when you were answering Luke, it seemed like you thought maybe uh, Steve was going in. Is that correct? Was that where you were blindsided, or did you know you were going in the whole time? No, I mean, there, there were indicators. Um, uh, you know, we were very tight. I mean, what people don't realize is we, we were there, uh, a week or so before actually the show air, we were suffering, we were freezing, we were half dressed. We didn't have anything for over seven days. Uh, you know, we had no protein. We were just eating, um, carrots and, 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 uh, onions and rice. And we were decaying as a team. And, and the only way to bring, you know, adversity brings people together. And so we were tight. We were huddled up. We were, you know, we slept on top of each other, cross legs, and you're, you know, farting on each other. I mean, it was a family that was thrown together instantly. And I stepped out. Charles and I stepped out. We we provided a lot for the team. Losing Charles was another effect that brought the team even closer together. And we had made the pact that, you know, we were going to see this to the end, and we were going to pick off the uh, other team the best strategy possible, which was um, you know art of war we were a strong unit but we could still take out smaller and stronger people from that side which that was rachel for our first uh duel of, duel of destiny so it was all in the play then we get the new guy the new guy comes in um steve comes in so we start i start immediately saying okay well you know the duel of destiny's coming up blah blah we selected our protected which was lauren and for whatever reason we don't know my speculation is he started singing them songs and, you know, they were dropping panties and being, you know, I don't know. And I started feeling a little ousted because some of the things that I would offer and try to help with, they didn't accept. Like when I went out and had the meal, I brought back food for them as well as I had some wine and everyone kind of rejected it. They were like, no. Oh. So I was like, damn, you know, what's going on here? You know, I'm no longer the provider. They were kind of sliding off of me. And then when I kept asking Lauren, because we had gotten surprised when JR was the protected, and we were trying to figure out whether I was going to go or Angela. And then the production came and got him and made him made his, make his decision on the spot, and he couldn't tell us what his decision was. So we had also said, we're not going to let that happen again. So when Lauren became the protected, we, I would have expected that the pack would have been intact if she come up and said, yeah, you know, we're going to go forward with our... Our, our pack, the new guys going in, but she kept, uh, you know, avoiding the right. actual, uh, she never revealed it. So she kept hiding it. And I kept asking her, have they asked you yet? What's going on? No, you'll find out it's the team's decision. So then I went around and I asked the team and everything, and I was getting cross-wired information. And then I started realizing, you know what? I don't think this is going my way, but I'm not going to lose faith in the team's integrity. So when I was standing there talking to Luke, Luke, as far as I know, right now, the integrity is still intact. We'll find out in a minute, right? And that's when I found out. Well, that leads us into our actually next Twitter question from uh, Jill, who wants to know if there is one thing that you could say to Lauren, the traitor, <laughs> what would you say to her? Um. Well, I, I, I did say, I'm the kind of guy that's like, 
you know, I'm not going to be, and, and what I didn't want is I didn't want crocodile tears and hugging for, you know, whatever view. It, oh, why? I'm sorry. We love you. Miss you. I, I was, I'm done. You know, you guys wronged me. I, I told them when I, at the huddle, I said, listen, I'm not, in, I, you know, I'm not doing this for you guys anymore. I'm doing this for me. I'm doing it for my family, Coco Beach. I'm doing it for Charles. I'm doing it for what I believe in because the team is gone. So directly, you know, Warren was the one who made the final decision, but it was the team. Now, if I have any, uh, I won't say regret, but if I could reach out to anyone, it would be Angela. Angela stood by me, and I saw nothing so far that indicated Angela ever turned on me. Even JR had a, had a, a flare-up, which I don't know if that aired, on Angela because Angela stood up for me. And Angela's caught in the crossfire. If I could go back, I'd give Angela a hug, and I'm rooting for Angela. Oh, great. That was that was definitely another question was who you were rooting for. So, I mean, I'm sure then that you haven't seen any of the episodes yet. But uh, speaking to how you said you were providing food and saving food, have you been aware of have you been made aware yet of how much Jeffrey uh, Jeff Fry? I'm sorry, <laughs> has been working with Jr. on your side, you know, throwing him food yes. over the wall. Yes. And how yes, do you feel yes, about yes, that? Yes, yes. I'm disgusted because I, um, my wife had even made um, friends with Jeffrey's fiance, mm -hmm. And um, yes, I'm very disappointed because I'm all about integrity. I'm all about sharing. It's a team effort. Because at this point in the game, the team needed, needs to be in, and needed to be intact. That was disappointing to me. You know, week four or five, we're going to have to start turning on each other and eating each other. But at this point in the game, it was important to keep that integrity. And when I found out that Jeffrey was, you know, he was one of my top ally, he and Angela were the two that I would go to. And I felt like they listened to me because Sam was kind of a, a floater. Lauren, I don't think, liked me out of the gun. And so I, I thought these were the two that were going to keep the team intact until, you know, we could make decisions together until those days came that we started having to eat each other. And um, I was really disappointed in that. I think that was a bad show for him personally um his his fiance is not happy about that i think it shows bad character however we're playing a game it's a different game than the way i would have played it i think we could have handled that a lot better um as a team and for him to start out like that right off the bat you know selling out is what i would call that and then i i, I witnessed when we had the food when we were doing the eating and i was stashing food he had he did not take partake in that at all, and he ate all his food and saved nothing for no one. So that gave me evidence that the guy was greedy, stingy, and on a different level. Right. Um. Well, speaking of food, and we know how important that was for you all living in the past. I know we've spent a lot of time discussing on our shows where the advantages lie in the past versus the future. So we talked to Rachel last week, who said. She doesn't see any advantages of living in the past. But now you were there. Aside from, you know, team camaraderie, which you might be able to argue now, do you feel like there is an advantage to living in the past? Well, it, it, like I said, it would have been a different story um, earlier on, yes. You know, we had integrity. We were tight. We were, we were going through uh, horrible situations, which adversity bringing us together was amazing. And, um, you know, we were un unstoppable if the integrity had stayed. If we had, had approached that with uh, a team unity, we could have fought our way out of that and we would have been tenacious and together doing so. Um, you know, we were really excited about going into the first um, worldly challenge as a team event where we had to tie the knots and everything. And, um, you know, I think the reason we failed that because, you know, at the time I didn't know it, we really didn't have the integrity that I thought we had. You know, obviously JR was doing his thing and, you know, the others had um, other agendas already popping up and it was like so early on in the game it was disappointing. But yeah, the advantage of being on the, on the, the, the cave life side, I call it, is um, we, we were working every day. We were stimulated. We were, um, we had a, a purpose, you know, a reason to get out of there and work together to do so. But simply because of the fact that they weren't really working together, they're kind of stuck in 
stuck in the past is the way I see it. Right. Well, speaking of that first week at the Duel of Destiny, we saw that, you know, you and Jesse were really at odds. I think all of America wanted you to to go at each other that first week. And, you know, we understand why it didn't work out that way strategically. But then we kind of saw this week that it seemed like you were okay now. So would you say that your relationship with Jesse is better or is it are you still angry over um, everything with Charles? Well, um, it's really interesting how things, uh, the, the way that things were turning and the emotions you're going through. I was very angry and, and, and I wanted to seek revenge on, um, Jesse for Charles because I really felt strongly that, you know, he had done that like a kamikaze, you know, and he was trying to take him out and they were trying to hurt our team and that was their strategy to win. Um, and, and at that first, Duel of Destiny, you know, I was I was charged, I was ready to go, and that's the kind of event I wanted to take Jesse on, not a 50-50 luck event that we ended up being in, and again, I wanted to strategically wait for that moment. I wanted to get Jesse weaker. I was telling my team, you know, we got to go at it like the art of war. We have got to get him into the weak side and strike him when he's weak and, and an event that and, and I would get stronger and I would take him on. They weren't ready to wait for that. You know, they took this big gamble and threw me under the bus and all this other stuff. But right. as it went on, you know, actually Jesse wrote a, a very a three page apology letter that he had, they would post stuff up and lean it against the glass so we could read it, which I don't think they, they showed that to the viewers. And I read this long thing. And then when I found my team had turned on me and he had had problems with his team, we had kind of made this connection and we knew that our um, our duel, if you will, was coming to, to be sooner than we had expected. Because ultimately, I think for a great TV, great viewing, is that we had let that marinate. And we were the last two standing, Team Epoch and Team Cronus, Wyatt and, and Jesse finally, you know, going at it. The battle of the century, you know, and that right. would have been amazing TV. But unfortunately, the way that things turned out. We had to, uh, we so we, we, we kind of mended and we knew we were going to go ahead and do it now. It was sooner than we expected. And yeah, I mean, I, I think he's a great guy. And if I can sum it up, I think that what I would like to finally see in the end is Jesse versus Angela. Oh, well, I want Jesse to go to the end. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, we have a choice in that. Wyatt popularity index. We, we can make things happen. We, you never know. You never know what will happen. I will put you down for that's your official endorsement. But I just want to let you know that you have so many fans on social media already. Um, is there any last thing to wrap up that you want to say to your fans? And can you let them know where they can find you online? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, um, wow. You know, I, I, there's a side of me and I'm going through all types of, uh, you know, emotions and things like, you know, off the show, you're, you're, you know, getting out and trying to interact with people is very strange. And, and I feel like I disappointed a lot of fans. I apologize for that. I, um, I, I, I do uh, appreciate the, the people who have recognized that I stayed true to my character and my integrity. I, I didn't blame the team for losing again. I was upset with being stabbed in the back and I, I believe I hope that the fans saw that I, I, I confronted that head on. You know, I wasn't going to go back and hug and, and be crocodile tears and, you know, stand true to myself. Um, I appreciate the fans. I did get to talk to a lot on Facebook yesterday. I friended a lot of people. So if people want to talk and still support, um, I do have a Facebook page. You can find me at either Wyatt Werneth or Wyatt Werneth of Opposite Worlds Facebook. Um, I have Twitter, which is Wyatt. 711 and um i'd be happy to continue um discussing i have so many things behind the scenes that i'd love to tell people about that obviously you guys don't get to see and you're probably hungry for we are we definitely are well we are out of time for this interview but hopefully you will come on and do one of our recaps with us wyatt where we recap the whole show and fill us in fill us in on anything you want to share we would love to hear from you again Absolutely. Keep watching. I'm going to be watching. I'm, um, you know, I'm hoping that you guys stay in the past until they decay and Jesse helps them stay there and Angela comes out and um, I'm sure there's going to be lots of twists and turns, but keep watching. All right. Thank you so much, Wyatt. All right. I appreciate it. Bye bye. 
So, no, um, why don't you go ahead, John, and do your outro. Hey, everyone, thanks for tuning in. No, our- no, no, no. I'm stopping this now. Try Hey, again. everyone, thanks for tuning no, in. No, not hi. The show's over. Goodbye, everyone. I'm tuning. Thanks for tuning in. Is that better? Yeah, do you want to look at the people when you say it? <laughs> I don't want to look at you. Turn your camera yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I don't want to see your old wrinkled old man hand. Um, <laughs> that wasn't a hand. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, well, then put how, it back away. well then, how you doing? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, thanks for hanging out with us as we chat <laughs> opposite worlds. Follow at the reality one more recap. Time? And not make it seem like you're being slowly tortured during it. <laughs> Happy high energy. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our love action can call. Okay, again. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to our opposite worlds recap. I just you said hey. Hi. You said hey. Oh, you said I- hey. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to our Opposite Worlds recap. Stay tuned for Frank's interview next. And that's for the edited yeah. version. Frank's still in the game. <laughs> Take five. <laughs> You're confusing me. Well, that about wraps up our show for this week. Now, don't forget you guys can find all of our Opposite Worlds content over at yourrealityrecaps.com slash O-Worlds. And if you want to watch us do this show or any of our shows live, like our Bravo Recaps or our Reality Check show, make sure you check out yourrealityrecaps.com slash live show. And of course, we'll be doing that one tomorrow night with James Wallington and his sister, and you guys control the show and it will be super fun. And hey, by the way, did you guys check out our daily vlogs yet? They are amazing and the links are below, so check them out. I think they're super fun and I love getting to share a different side of us with all of you. Of course, thumbsing up and subscribing really helps support our shows. You guys get on that too. We will see you guys all tomorrow night for our Reality Check show. See you guys all then. Bye everybody. Bye bye. Okay, you suck at that. It's bye everybody. (laughs) 